Salam from Singapore. Thank you so much. Uh, I, bought your, I bought your book and it has been so helpful. I'm a revert and parents are struggling to accept my change. How can I show mm. more love to them? Uh, I have them watch the broadcast with you, inshaAllah. And uh, mashallah on your, your acceptance to Islam and Allah guided you to tariqahs, a soft and moderate path. Uh, definitely have them watch our video and our talks and, and to listen to the talks and, and about good character and uh, living by a good example and, and nothing extreme and nothing fast. So, you know, try to be as moderate uh, with them as, as possible and uh, so that they, they so slowly to be introduced to everything. Sudden change uh, can, can shock any family, Muslim families especially. So, it's a matter that uh, people coming. Uh, uh, reverting back into Islam, even people who thought they were born into Islam, as soon as they wear a beard and put a turban and, and put all these things, their families like, oh well, what, what's this because they don't even uh, understand that that's the sunnah and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's always a, a cultural shock for, for everyone. So just uh, everything in our path has to be slow and, and moderate and uh, the best is the change in character. That you know that we have to be an ambassador for this reality that uh, when we come to all these teachings but yet we yell and scream and act bad at home then people think and they start to use it against, oh so you became Sufi and you're still like this and then they start to use these things against us. And it's always a reminder that to be an exemplar and to be an ambassador of the way and try our best to sort of put in the shaykh's teachings and washing, keeping clean, keeping anger down and struggling against things so that the family members can actually see a difference. Oh mashaAllah you go into them or you, you really change, your character is really changing and you're softer and gentler and then more understanding. So inshaAllah we, we leave always a good example so that people come across us and they, they feel interested in, in what they see of us of, of a character and, and humility and a good example inshaAllah. And uh, share the, the videos in the Singapore area and the Singapore groups and Facebook and WhatsApp. You know there's some WhatsApp groups with 10,000 people or Telegram groups with 30,000 people or 100,000 people, take the video and just keep throwing them in there. Throw them in there, post the videos, post this, post that inshaAllah. Never know who it, it comes in contact with and, and who's interested and, and who understands the, the Urdu articles that we have a whole section on the, the website for Urdu on Nur Muhammad and you can take those Urdu articles and share them into the Urdu watch, WhatsApps and chats and Telegram and all of these things. And the whole article is in Urdu and, and very beautifully done, the Urdu team they put a lot of effort, they put videos together and, and uh, gifts together and articles together, so alhamdulillah. So many ways for, for all our audience to sort of be active and, and to make a difference and you feel better, you know life with service, we feel good at night that I tried my best Ya Rabbi, really I did. If you give me to be stronger and you give me more ability I would, I would go more and do more. So that's a good feeling at night versus knowing, uh, I really didn't do anything and I don't really know if you know, if Allah loves me, if Prophet loves me. But you know that when you live a life of service and you've done your best and you're continuously doing your best, they send that sakina into the heart that you feel their love, you feel their presence, you feel their support, that they're happy and pushing you to go and do more inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Which durood uh, is afsal or the, the best and why? There can be no one that is the best, they're all the best. So we can't single out one durood al sharif and say, this is the best one. I'm not capable of, of saying that nor would I even attempt to. Prophet has a durood for every sickness, for every opening and for every remedy. So for everything Allah has provided an opening. So each of the Durud sharif have immense, immense secrets for openings, for taking away difficulties, for, for seeing unseen, for oh, anything we can think of. There's Durud al-Sharif for that, there's Durud al-Sharif for healing. So we have those on the app that you recite them daily for healing. 
there's the Rudd al-Sharif for opening Salawat al-Fatiha. So right now the shaykhs are giving out Salawat al-Fatiha seven times daily for opening, opening what's been closed and what's of difficulties in front of us. So alhamdulillah there, there's uh, endless oceans and for every infinite tajalli that is upon Sayyidina Muhammad there can be no limit and no, no sort of boundary for its understanding. So as long as we keep our hearts open Prophet keep inspiring. There are durood al-sharif that turn your light like a star. Ya ayyuha al-mushtaqinu bi nur jamalihi wal muhtadun shafa'atuhu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad. That's a najmi, that salawat itself make your life to be like a sun, like a star. So each durood al-sharif is an immense ocean from the realities of Sayyidina Muhammad As alaikum beloved Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Is there any surah or dua to ask for forgiveness to earn the love of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We have a Sayyid al-Istighfar and we have that all on the app. The, the, the master of istighfar Tawbah to Abdin Zalimeen it starts with. And that recommended to be recited. Our fajr prayer covers everything. Even if you can't read it at fajr time, stop in the midday before Salat al duha and recite your fajr awrat. And it takes not but 10 minutes once you become used to it, or 15 minutes or 30 minutes at the most, you stop and recite the dua of fajr because the entire awrat of, sal- of Salat al fajr is immense oceans of reality of taking away obstacles, difficulties, every type of every type of harm for that day will be taken away with that recitation for Salat al-Fajr. And the salawats in there or oh, everything in there is immense because that's from Sultanul Awliya moving to the presence of Maqam al-Mahmud and to the presence of Sayyidina Mahmud so by imitating what they recite we're being dressed by their tajallis. And anytime you recite it, if you have to recite it at night because you couldn't get to it in the day you were busy before you prayed fajr, just make sure that within that 24 hours you recite that uh, etiquette inshaAllah and it dresses common, complete and perfected inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum dear Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there any reality of reciting durood before and after du'as? Of course it is, it's all in hadith and teaching of Ahlul Sunnah. The, the salawat is, uh, is gains acceptance of all du'a that starts with the salawat on Prophet and that ends with the salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad that you've gained Allah's attention as soon as you make the durood al-sharif, you gain the nazar because this is jawka wa astaghfirullah. When Allah says, when the people are oppressors, that means 100% everyone is an oppressor, that they came to you Ya Rasulullah and that's Qur'an, that's the order of Qur'an. And then they asked my forgiveness in your presence and then they asked your forgiveness, then they should find them forgiven. So this is Qur'an and the, the, the understanding of Ahlul Sunnah ulama. So how to do that is that as soon as you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad, Prophet described my soul will come to you. Now you're in the presence of Prophet that's the jawka, go to. So when an oppressor is saying and making a salawat, their soul is in the presence of Prophet As soon as they make their du'a, it's heard by Prophet and then when they end with the adab of ending with the durood al-sharif then it seals that entire blessing, it packages it with salawat, package with salawat and then makes the du'a to rise because the ruhaniyat of Prophet Shafi al-wara is going to intercede and take that du'a and make it to be clean and purified and present it to Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah 
can you please expand on the reality behind annihilation of oneself for the Shaykh and how to be accepted into the annihilation of the Prophet Yeah, the station of annihilation is a fana. So these three stages are always continuous. We have to have a muhabbat, we have a hudur and then the fana. So everything requires a muhabbat and love because you can't make the bond with the shaykh through your head, right? You can't say, I, I love you but that, that doesn't mean anything. So they know that the secret for us to connect has to be love. Not through your head, I just say, I love you, I love you, I love you that was the talk today. So then you give gift, gift is not sadaqah. Then you give your zakat, then you give your support, then you give your, your, your khidmat and, and links and the shaykh begins to see your name everywhere. He sees every gift that's coming in that somebody is giving the shaykh a gift for him and his family. He sees the links that you're supporting, he sees all the activities you're doing. So of course then now the shaykh is loving that person because they're active and they're supporting. That's why I said just telling oh make du'a for me, take du'a for me. That's somebody coming and taking the magic beans. That doesn't work in this community because shaykhs are, are far sharper than any sharp person out there. And you know we, we deal with a lot of foxes, they think they're very clever but we outfox every fox because this is the hikmah and wisdom that Allah gives. You know for the shepherd he knows where the fox is hiding and the character of a fox. So it means that our way that's why they keep pushing the khidmat, they keep pushing the service is because the shaykh has been given by his shaykh like magic beans. If anyone takes from these beans and plant them uh, their whole life is going to change. So how many everyone to want to come and steal them? Want to come for five seconds in front, take one and run, why would they do that? Because they want to put it in your backyard and they're going to come and take its fruits because they know you. So they want you to have the bean so that when the fruits come they're going to come and say, where's my share of the fruits? So that they have more beans, otherwise if, if, if they have 10 beans it's very logical and, 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 and scientific. For his shaykh gives him 10 beans and says, plant these well my son, I say, inshaAllah we do zikr, 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 find these 10 sincere people. I say, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. And they with love, they go back and they plant that love in their life and these ten become very prosperous. What do they do? Because you knew that they were with love, of course they're going to say, we had a great harvest and here shaykh, here's yours. Another shaykh may have 50 beans. So then he takes those and then he looks for more sincere people. And he give them, he give them, give them, give them that secret. And they plant and it came out hundred came back to him. So it means it keep is in multiplying, means that the prosperity of the life of the student in every aspect whether their skills, their financial, their, their, their character, they'll be serving in many ways and they come back and that's what make tariqah strong. But somebody just like drive through, want to take them, then he'll lose the ten that his shaykh gave him. And they say, this is how you used it, you just gave it and then you have to come back and ask for more from us. Or the wise shaykh and his, then he gets his rank from his shaykh that, look we gave to him, he planted a garden and now thousands are coming in. He has people from everywhere giving support, writing articles, you know, there's over 60 translators on articles and books that are under, uh, under their software and management. So it's not just you know you inherit something, you grab a juppa, you go out and you know try to give talks. This whole life was building a reputation, then building a, 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 a rapport and building a love with the student that they trust you, they love you, you love them, they, they live a life of service, they get the magic bean and their life changes. And as a result you know they're going to be there to support you. And this was the Sahabi that whatever they did, you know they didn't take their deen and leave Prophet alone to die in battlefield. Whatever they got from Prophet of realities they stuck right there unto the death. And they wanted to die at the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad and that was the reality of Ahlul Badr. 
said that I brought you here for the purpose of one thing, then everything changed, it's now going to be a big battle. Anyone want to leave? Leave? How leave? They were crying, how could we leave? We, we, we came to you to the end of the earth and we, we'll go to you, go with you uh, to the end of this existence. And that's what Allah then gave them all their realities and that's why the Ahlul Badr when we make du'a in إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِحِ رَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يُدْخُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَجًا Ayat al-Kareem is describing these Ahlul Badr that Allah was so happy with these Sahabi He gave them all their realities and you're talking then a Prophet with 313 Sahabis in their full reality. Who could defeat them? That's why when he walked into Mecca everything was just tranquil, the devils and people were all destroyed. And as a result just walked into Mecca with not a single person to be in difficulty. That what a great Prophet that he made all his companions shining stars, means they reach their entire reality. That's immense, immense reality. As a result the nation has the magnificent status of immense Sahabi, immense Ahlul Bayt. So this, the, what can you ask more than that? That the a Prophet that perfected all his people and that's the, the perfection that we are benefiting from that reality. So alhamdulillah for all of that. That's the, the muhabbat and the love. So that's how we started this was with muhabbat and love. So when they have this love and the student is showing that love then at one point the shaykh's du'a it begin to dress them in every aspect of their life. That becomes their muhabbat and their love. They're not bouncing around to ten different shaykhs, they're not showing all sorts of infidelity and, and bad character, they're loyal. They're loyal to be trusted in their loyalty. They enter now into the ocean of muhabbat. When they begin to meditate and contemplate they're continuously in the hudur. They're continuously trained that only shaykh for me and i with the shaykh at all times and I see him and he sees me. When they enter deep into that hudur now they're annihilating. So the more you go into the presence the more you start to like those uh, sci-fi shows you become particles and begin to vanish. You're leaving your solid state. So every matter has three states, solid, liquid, gaseous. So you're going to break down your solid state. The more you enter into the fire of the shaykh and the hudur and the presence of the shaykh with your muraqabah and with your meditation, what's going to happen to your solid state? It's going to burn it so that your solid state it become like a liquid. And many people can't take that and they become agitated, they become angered, they begin to run from tariqah because the burning process of you evaporating, your bad character evaporating and your, your brain evaporating, your thought process evaporating and just melting, melting, melting. And the, the difficulty of, of tariqah life and testing and testing and testing, you begin to melt. So their nazar and their energy is taking away your solid state because when you're solid and you're trying to fit into his programs you find yourself like it's not fitting, my, my, my square thing is not fitting into that. But if you're liquid what happens? Any condition the shaykh throws you in you're liquid, you're lucid, you're fluid, you can flow into anything. And that's the training they want. So wherever the shaykh throws his, his murid, his you know shaykh and naqshbandiya is a murid and everyone else is a muhibbeen. So naqshbandi murids are, are all under ijazah and shaykhs. So it means that my shaykh whenever he threw us into a situation you have to be liquid. You have to be able to flow with it and what they say go with the flow. Not your way is the only way and this and then hard-headed and nobody would listen to you, nobody would follow you, nobody would come to anything that you did. So then the burning of the shaykh will make uh, the next state of matter to be liquid. So three states of matter in life, either you're solid and you're just stubborn and everything has to be your understanding, your way and you continuously want to talk or you'll be burned. When you burn you have to go down to liquid. 
And then that liquid is now in the process of annihilating, right? From liquid and if the shaykh can… if the student can reach a state of liquid then what happens? As soon as he becomes liquid every time the nazar of the shaykh hits him he becomes ethereal because his gaseous state means immediately his soul is out of his body and he's experiencing everything. So as soon as they make a nazar upon us in associations the ethereal state begins to flow, the crying and the energy because their nazar is coming with an energy and that's enough to, to take the liquid into a gas. You don't have to apply much heat to take a liquid into gas but you have to use a lot of heat to burn down something solid. So that make sense? Three states of matter, lot of energy to burn the matter. But once you've been brought down and you feel yourself liquid and fluid, you just go with the flow, it doesn't really matter, nothing, I got no comment, I got no nothing, it just go with the flow of whatever's happening. That liquid state is then a, is a student that immediately can become ethereal. As soon as the nazar and the energy hits the water they're rising. Ethereal is the angelic reality of their soul is all over the place and they continuously within a hall and this is the important state, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi didn't really fully understand the story of the angels Harut and Marut, those angels created magic for people or just jinns make it? The Harut and Marut, we have, we have Hajjit Kamran uh, going to be making a movie in, in, in uh, Hollywood <laughs> on the reality of Babylon. So that, that has an immense reality, that's where the two rivers meet. So this well of Babel and the reality of Harut and Marut was a story of, of uh, angels not respecting human life as far as the difficulty of, of its testing. That the, the remnant of, of Azazil's teaching put an arrogance within the angels. Because the angels are water and solid uh, and, and stable. When they were taught by Azazil in that character they began to have doubt and question which wasn't their character but they took on the character of the teacher. That's why we said that the, the, the knowledge, anyone reciting Qur'an, yes Qur'an is beatific but you're going to pick up the the teacher who's teaching it to you, you're going to pick up his energy and his character. If his character is bad this beautiful Qur'an is going to come out really bad through your mouth because you pick up the character of the teacher through their energy, through their emotions, then through how they talk and they teach. So the angels were picking up the bad character of Azazil who became shaitan. And from this remnant of doubt that was created within the heavens not understanding the complexity of human life, they were doubting that, oh these humans they, they keep making sins, they make all these things. And Allah just said, which one want to try their life and go down to earth and come back, I'll give you a, a name, Ismullah Azam, you'll recite that name and you'll come back up into your angelic form and you can go back down into your human form. So Harut and Marut took the challenge and they went down to earth and immediately they loved it, they thought it's amazing, they, they loved the, the women of Bani Adam, they thought this is amazing. They went to a bar and in the bar they saw a beautiful woman and this is, this is so amazing, this, they were so attracted with the hawa and their desires because as soon as they entered into human form they took on all the human characteristics of their nafs, their desire, everything that they didn't have and so they didn't understand. As soon as they came in they were overwhelmed with desires they were not familiar with and had no understanding of. And so they saw a beautiful woman. And the woman started to talk to them and said, why don't you come and, and be with me? And so, no, no we, we can't, we're from a different uh, thing, we don't, we don't want to do that. No, no come. 
and began to sit and drink with her. And as soon as they became intoxicated in alcohol and communicating and, and wanting now to flirt with this female, she said, I want you to be with me and I'll be with you but I have one thing from you is I have somebody, a spouse, a husband that I want you to kill and if you kill him then I'll be with you. And they were so intoxicated, overwhelmed by her beauty that they did what she asked. Killed the husband, fornicated with the lady and immediately they tried to make their the Ismailul Azam and to go back. This is like a long story short and uh, much to their surprise Ismailul Azam didn't work after you made those types of sins. And as a result the angels within the heavens were trembling that they understood that the human life is possessed with different qualities that angelic understanding has no understanding about, they don't have those issues. And these angels came to earth but not a day and lost everything. And as a result they remained on earth but with angelic knowledges. And then Allah gave them to the well of Babel and said that your, your dominion will no longer be on earth, you'll be no, no longer allowed to enter into the heavens, you'll be sanctioned to earth. And in Babylon near the two rivers where they went into the Iraqi war, there's a well in Babylon and in that well these two are been put by angels upside down and they were made a source because the knowledge they have wasn't wiped from them. So as a result they give all black magic knowledges in that well and majority of people who go there from cousins they go to take that knowledge to do fitna on earth, breaking relationships and, and everything that is blasphemous and against Allah So that was an important move for them. So when they wanted to go into that reality and uh, the Iraqi wars was about securing the well of Babel and to take its black magic out. So as a matter of fact if you research it they immediately came in and closed off that whole region and nobody was allowed to enter in that region and there were special flights going back and forth into that well to achieve and to give their people and their learned ones who wanted understanding of black magic they were receiving that from that well. Till, till now this is the most recent events that have been happening in the world was to secure that well and to teach their learned ones these magic for the arrival of Dajjal, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If one posts a question here and it is not given any attention is this part of the annihilation and one should be patient or the question is just missed so repost it until acknowledged? No this is nowhere near annihilation, annihilation is a very very difficult process. If you're, if you're upset by a simple thing like that then you know it's gonna get a lot tougher a lot quicker. Questions they'll, they'll look at it and see if it's appropriate for the entire audience or has it already been talked about or is it in the book. So many different reasons and the questions also can be sent to help me at nurmuhammad.com. And everything is just by patience and, and good character and if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be and you can repost it again tomorrow and you know or you can text the help me at nurmuhammad.com and ask if the question is appropriate to be asked on, on live YouTube. So again the guys are moderating and, and seeing what's best for the subject matter and the talk. So there is some fluency, we're rolling. And you can tell by the questions that they ask were sort of always on topic. You imagine if it was going left and right, left and right all, all nobody would want to listen to that. So it, yeah, there's many different variables but most important is patience and, and to bring oneself out down and not to, to be angered by anything, especially not something as simple as that, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What are the realities behind the energy shifts? in a full moon, please forgive my ignorance. No problem, inshaAllah the reality of, of energy is the immensity of the moon. 
you know the immensity of, of moonlight is uh, our way. And the, the effect of the moon on earth, one is the symbol, Allah said, I show you on the horizon, I show you within yourself, the importance of the sun, the moon and earth. So you don't just simplify everything and say, it's Allah. Any, any question you ask these different madhab people, this is Allah, that this shirk you're talking about. This is a ridiculous, Allah wants us to understand His creation. So then marifa and the way of marifa is to go into understanding, what is this sun that Allah created and it's eternal. All the Prophets of Allah saw the same sun. So then that's a star and star doesn't have any matter. So anything without matter is eternal. So the stars are eternal and the sun represents eternity. The moon represents following and guidance. You know it doesn't turn, it doesn't rotate. It always keeps one face to the earth and it's continuously following the sun. And as a result of all of its bombarding and all of its testing, want to know testing, look to the moon. Look how much the, the, the moon has been beaten, has huge craters and there's nothing living on it. There's no civilization, no buildings, no beautiful structure, it has been wiped clean. Means its heart is completely clean of anything from dunya. And Allah has tested it, smashed it, did every type of difficulty to it and it still follows the sun and reflects beautifically the light upon earth. And that's the reality of a student and the shaykh. The shaykh has to follow the light, its only coordinates is the light. Not the opinion of people, not the opinion of dunya, not, nothing, just follow the light. And as a result it continuously takes bombardment and the more bombardment and all of these difficulties the shaykhs take that leaves their light to be pure and reflect out. As a result of the pure and perfected light the inhabitants of earth are benefiting. So then the earth and understanding the earth and the effect of moonlight on the earth then we just have to google and research. It raises the water of the body raises the tides of the ocean and has many different effects. That's why every day of the month has a reality. And we said the first 15 days moving up to the full moon is a birth. So that energy is coming in as a birth and then dressing the servant and the fasting on the white days. Why fasting on the white days? Because there's an awliya in charge of that reality and when you fast on those three days of white days, the light that will be reflected to you will wash away your sins and make you to be nurani. If anybody can fast, doesn't mean by saying this that we're doing it. At a younger age if you can do it and it's easy for you and you know struggle for it then alhamdulillah. But there's a reality of fasting on the white nights because of the, the awliya that's in charge of that reality to dress those whom are making that intention. And they become nurani and many difficulties washed away from them as a result of fasting those days and being dressed by its nights inshaAllah. But the sun and the moon and earth is all about the tariqah and following realities and following guidance inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam If I was connecting my heart to my shaykh during the zikr and I see the face of another shaykh, do I maintain connection to my shaykh? or redirect my energy to the other shaykh? Just keep your connection. It's through that connection that the face is appearing. You don't have to do anything else, you don't have to autopilot and, and shift out. Just keep your connection as a result then these tajallis and, and dressings begin to dress upon. When you meditate on that reality, remember that everything comes as a distraction. So as you're trying to make your connection, don't think that shaitan is not trying to distract. Every type of image or, or sight or something coming to make you to look. 
So shaitan is, is aware that you're trying to connect your heart, trying to distract you from your connection. So many things will be happening. So it's being a passenger and all these different visions coming, all these different sights coming, the consistency is just to connect and that I'm nothing, connect my heart and that I want to enter into an ocean of power. And then I'm asking that ocean of power that dress me from this energy and that see myself in a continuous ocean of energy from all six directions and take yourself to be annihilated. Don't enter into the world of, of hallucinating because as soon as you start to see and think you see and know oh, shaitan can come in it's like a television and begin to pop up images and, oh then let me look at this one, oh let me see at this one. And then we talked before on this subject, that's why I say get the book. By the time this reality all of a sudden you've been meditating if they, they see your pattern of this, this guy likes entertainment in meditation. Then you say, okay oh now because shaitan can do it, you don't think you're, you're you know you achieved the, the, the golden lock in which you're forbidden from shaitan. This is just your beginning stages, as soon as you close your eyes and try to do and you want to have like visions. Oh then the shaitan come and say he give you like a jubba and he's bringing you like a cane and then he's bringing you all these things and you're like, oh this is great, it's like Amazon, all these things are coming to me from everywhere. Doesn't work that way. So that's why they give the coordinates, be consistent. If they see that you're a person that like to go into the world of imagination, imagining that you're big and all these things are coming to you, even if it's real negate it. So even if it's you, you think it's real, negate it. You, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, thank you very much and I just want to be in the energy of the shaykh. Then you begin to see the shaykh dress you and then we want to go into an, the oceans of energy. And then that ocean of energy is like a lightning and I want to enter into that direction and be hit by this energy and you begin to feel it. So it's not something seen. You feel the energy is coming and beginning to move through the body and you want to take yourself into an ocean of annihilation that all I want to reach is to the oceans of Allah's Qudra. That's it. If I, oh, oh, then I saw… because you're like on a thing. If they show you something here and you're imagining and you're going off then he was able to stop you from reaching that reality. And every tangent that come to you that's all he's trying to do. Is hey, hey, come, come here, come here, come for this jubba, come look here. Then you go there and say, oh, I was given a beautiful jubba. No, you were distracted from something. You should have reached to the ocean of power. And the ocean of power is the only thing that's important. As soon as we reach to that ocean to be dressed by it, dressed by it and it begin to annihilate the servant and obliterate the servant until they become one with that ocean and they feel and hear everything in Allah's ocean of power. So that has to be achieved, not visions and look for this, look for that, get this because you don't know it's real and you don't know shaitan's bringing it or the heavens are bringing it. The heavens are bringing it, humility is to say, thank you very much, it's not for me. Just let me to keep my connection, keep my connection, I want to enter into the ocean of power. And the one whom been dressed by ocean of power, this is then the character, the humility, everything. The one whom been dressed by imagination thinks themselves very big and their character never changed. So then they just went into hallucinating of who they are and the character never changed. So they never entered into that ocean of power, they're just lost in sightseeing. And it could have been shaitan the whole time giving them a sightseeing tour. As Salaamu dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Similar to your talk on high towers letting beings in the sky come down to earth, does mining deep into the ground also unleash beings? I worked in mining for years. Yeah, many different creations are in the ground and when the, there are different realities in the ground. And one of the incident that was on the news was the Chilean mines. There are seven diamonds that represent the seven big awliya on this earth. And each diamond is represented by one of them and looking at the diamond you receive the tajallis from the realities of those diamonds or if you look at the, oh, that wali you'll receive the tajalli of that diamond. 
but they're hidden and the jinn have hidden them for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi So when the Chilean mine and the miners were digging, Mawlana Shaykh's teaching was they got too close to one of those diamonds and as a result Allah shut down the well, shut down their digging. And when He shut down their digging they had no way of coming out. So then the miraculous nature of how they survived was important to see. They survived with no food and water, minimal amount of crackers and water and they said that they were surviving from an energy they didn't understand and they weren't trying to kill and eat each other because people who survived on a mountain they became hungry and they ate each other on the outside of the mountain. But these men, the 30-40 miners who went deep into the earth like a qabr, because they were so close to that diamond the angelic reality was sustaining them and they were not harming each other, not eating each other and whatever little they ate they were being satisfied and fed. Then they described that when the miners finally tried to reach to them and rescue them they send down a hole for, for rescue and they began to send food down they got sick with that food. Because then it broke the tajalli and then, then they had to be rescued and taken out. But yes anytime you, you go into the earth there's many different creations that that's their abode and there's many different hidden realities and some good and most bad. So the people take a risk of entering into these, these uh, dimensions and caves, caves within the ocean and all of a sudden you see the cave floods. And everybody dies in it because there's something in there and things in there that they don't want people coming there, inshaAllah. Sayyidi a few people asking, when are the white nights? The, the 12th, 13th, 14th of the full moon. So when they fast on the 12th, 13th and 14th, the three days consecutive then they receive the tajalli and the wali that's in charge of the, that reality of the white nights makes du'a for them and reflects that light upon them also and their reality become very nurani, inshaAllah. Um, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. What to do in a situation when we have feelings in the heart not to go somewhere even if it's a holy gathering? Because in past we had that feeling and went and something bad happened. Yeah, yeah, that you have to email help me and Nur Muhammad and you have to go over the situation that what are you doing and what protection do you have and where are you going that you think to be holy and maybe it's not holy. and. Depending upon what type of jamaah is there and so it needs more information because in general anyone hears that would have the wrong information. So that's something you have to email it help me at Nur Muhammad and describe what event, who and what's happening to you, what do you do to, as a precaution. Because if, if you have a lot of practices and you go somewhere and they're really not that holy then you carry all the burdens. So always the energy goes to the most positive source. So in our lives we try to go to more positive associations so that to release the negative charge and pull and receive all the positive charge. But if, if you're doing a lot of practices and you're the positive charge and you go somewhere and there are probably a lot of negative people that don't do any spiritual practices and they gathered for Israel and Miraj and boom they send all the energy to you. So that then I have, we have to understand what is it that you're doing, what type you're putting the taweez, what are the practices and where. So it could be a holy event with a whole bunch of people who don't do holy practices. And then if one pious person enters then they carry a lot of burdens from that association so they have to just take precautions and, and uh, to go over that with the email inshaAllah. Good. Subhanahu rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.